Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about 10 best self-help books. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. I recall the first time I had a self-help book in my possession. I was perplexed. At that point, I realized that my fate was not sealed. I would be able to train and coach myself. The books I read will lay out a plan for me to follow in order to succeed. All I had to do was pay attention to the voice that aspired to reach new heights. Every time I agreed to take on a new challenge, I knew it would take me out of my comfort zone. But, after enough iterations, I realized it would become more, than just a part of my repertoire, it would become a part of me. Not all self-help books are created equal. Others will help you get started on your journey, while others will give you a boost, once you've gained experience in specific areas. Here are some of the best that I recommend reading regardless of your age. Number 1. What You're Gonna Do With That Duck? By Seth Godin. This book is a work of art, and unlike most self-help books, it focuses on an endless number of areas on which you can, and must, change. Godin lets you contemplate the tough questions you'd, never venture to ask yourself with his ruthless sincerity and sincere motivation. The consequence is a whole different way of looking at the world, one that is more vivid, fresher, and full of new and daring possibilities. If you're looking for a friend who understands you, a boss who pushes you to go deep into your uncomfort zone, a wise guru who tells you what needs to be left behind, or a sage who announces the coming of a new age, look no further, you'll find all of these wise voices in this magnificent book. This one is a must-have. Number 2. Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Perhaps it's because randomness played such a large role in my years, as a poker player that I consider this book important. We often assign talent where only chance exists, we confuse association with causation, and we undervalue the enormous impact that small improvements can have. This book taught me something I don't often hear from others, you can do something right and still lose, or you can do something wrong and still win. As a result, it's not about the outcome, it's about the behavior that got you there. This vital message is at the heart of all of my life choices. This book by Taleb will help you build such a perspective, so that you can live in a world that you don't fully comprehend, where outcomes aren't always straightforward indicators of success, and where chance appears to play games with our fates. Don't be taken in by chance. Number 3. The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. I read this book when I believed that strength was something I could strive for. Power for the sake of power. And, though I disagree with my former self on this issue, power is very real, it is the invisible scepter, that governs all hierarchical relationships around us. This is still a book I recommend. I believe it is important to understand how people misuse power for their own gain, as well as what you can do to defend yourself from these power abuses. Aside from the fact that all of the stories in this collection revolve around strength. It contains many life lessons as well as fascinating historical anecdotes. The willingness to use power for good, if read in a certain way. This eye-opening book covers a wide spectrum of human development, from Caesar to Goethe, Sun Tzu to Machiavelli. If you, like me, prefer something less egotistical, Green's new book Mastery, which I haven't read, might suffice. Number 4. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. This book's title doesn't do it justice. Covey shares with us seven practices to adopt in order to be fully successful with everything you want to accomplish. Of course, it isn't as easy as it seems. He emphasizes the importance of a paradigm shift, or a fundamental shift in how we view the world and ourselves. This book can be used as a guide to go through the stages of making such a move, along with activities and all. Covey's book is filled with insight that really makes a difference. It's part shock therapy, part ageless spiritual wisdom. Number 5. The Psychedelic Explorer's Guide by James Fadiman. Although the inclusion of a book on psychedelics in this list of self-help books might be surprising, I believe that any philosophical distinction between resources like books, meditation, or molecules is irrelevant. They should all be judged purely on their own merits. And the benefits of such chemical keys when used constructively outnumber every book on this list. The Psychedelic Explorer's Guide will show you how to prepare yourself and your environment, as well as what to take and how much to take, and what to do if anything goes wrong. So you can improve your thought, imagination, introspection, and emotional balance while remaining healthy. Using comprehensive research literature and personal wisdom, this book includes everything you need to know about using psychedelics, as a method for self-improvement. This is a must-have for both new and seasoned psychonauts. 
Number 6. Eat That Frog, by Brian Tracy. We have some big tasks ahead of us, and just thinking about them causes resistance. We don't know where to start and are feeling frustrated before we even started. We get easily distracted to get rid of the feeling, only to realize that hours have passed valuable hours and we're back in the same situation as before, still unsure where and how to begin, but now feeling guilty, which manifests itself in a greater need for diversion. Tracy urges us to eat the frog in order to crack the spell of procrastination until it paralyzes us, set our goals straight, deconstruct larger tasks into smaller ones, and learn when to tackle the big frog first or start with something else. Number 7. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This Hill novel, published in 1937, is a masterpiece. Don't bother with the edited versions, because they all leave out crucial and contentious material, some historical and some relevant to the book's purpose of thinking and growing wealthy. Although the word rich may mean that this book is solely about material gain, it is far more than that. This is perhaps the first clear mention of positive thinking in terms of how to care for more than just the money in your wallet, but also the thoughts in your mind. This book has proven to be impervious to the ravages of time. It addresses everything from the fundamentals of planning, decision-making, and persistence to more sophisticated strategies, like auto-suggestion, transmutation, and the lessons we can learn from terror. This isn't a get-rich-quick novel, but rather a timeless guide to figuring out what really matters in life. Riches can't always be measured in dollars, it says right at the start. Number 8. The Attention Revolution by Alan Wallace. In a world where ever stronger innovations vie for your attention, one way to motivate yourself is to redirect that attention to where you want it to shine. That is exactly what this book provides. Wallace explains the road to Shamatha, a Buddhist meditation state of mind free of all distractions, in his book The Attention Revolution. It is a difficult and long journey that we will almost certainly not be able to complete in this lifetime. Getting to stage two or three, on the other hand, would make life a lot easier. The attention revolution is a great introduction to meditation that will motivate you to take on the challenge and see what you can do by training your mind. If you've reached this degree of concentration, you can use it to open your heart with Alan B. Wallace's practice of the four immeasurables, or to deepen your practice with this wonderful commentary by Dajom Lingpa. You may want to look at this guide before reading this book to get a better understanding of how to prioritize your life. Number 9. The Paleo Manifesto by John Durant. It seems that we have been thrust into an ever faster paced world forged by our own hands and minds over the last 10,000 years or so. We've only recently been able to piece together our journey and focus on our humble beginnings. This incredible book is a true reflection. It dates back to the Paleolithic era, when people were looking for answers to questions about health and longevity. Durant weaves a mind-blowing tale out of science and his own personal experiments that will express the value of an evolutionary viewpoint on how to live well. Number 10. Mindsight by Daniel J. Siegel. Mindfulness alone is not enough, as my Burmese meditation teacher used to say. Siegel seems to have taken this to heart, creating a special combination of meditation, psychoanalysis, and neuroscience that he refers to as mindsight. A potent blend of emotional and social intelligence, as he puts it. Although it may not always be the best approach to try to get rid of something that seems to threaten the very heart of our being at ease, it certainly helps to consider and have compassion for that small part of ourselves that upsets that ideal picture of ourselves. This book is jam-packed with strategies, observations, and epiphanies that will teach you everything you need to know about reprogramming the brain and maximizing its neuroplasticity potential. This is an excellent book for both spiritual seekers and scientists. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.